Hello and welcome back to Overdose Vapes. This is Travis. I'm all alone today. No Josh here with me. Uh, this is a different video. It's not a juice review. This is something I've been promising for a while, so I'm finally doing it. This is a, uh, it's just like a beginner coil guide. Like, um, coil 101. Coil theory. An intro to coil theory. What I hope to do is just to show you some basics. We'll talk about what coils, you know, just what they are. Uh, what kind of uh, material you use to make them with, how to make a basic coil, um, some things that we can get to make it easier, some tools that I use, and then um, and then I'll give you, I'm, I'm planning on giving you something that you can use, like a basic framework that you can take and use your imagination and come up with your own coils. Because that's kind of what I've always done, is that I, I learned a few basic techniques like uh, how to twist wire, um, I learned about parallel coils, um, different things like that, different kinds of wire, those sort of things that you just learn over time uh, when you're vaping. And then you can use those techniques and make uh, variations on them, like twisted parallels, uh, parallels where one piece of wire is twisted and one's not, um, things like that. So today I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to straighten wire first off. Uh, that's the first technical thing I'm going to show you how to do, and then I'm going to, and then I'm also going to show you how to twist wire, and then we're going to build a parallel coil with a uh, one piece twisted, one one piece not twisted. Okay, um, so let me change the camera, to, that way we can get a better look at the table. Um, nothing fancy, but we're just gonna we're gonna talk about it. All right. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the table, see what uh what kind of stuff I use when I build, and then we're gonna talk about the basics here. Um, okay, so today, what I've been using lately, uh, what I really like, is this Nichrome wire. Nichrome 80. I get mine from Lightning Vapes. They have really reasonable prices. Uh, this here is 28 gauge Nichrome, and this is 26 gauge Nichrome. Okay, so that's what I use for my basic day-to-day -day cables. I use a lot of 26 gauge, not very much 28 gauge, but I do have some. I mostly use that for um, more advanced things like uh, Clapton's. We're, uh, that, that'll be a different video. Um, okay, so, but you don't have to use Nichrome. You can use Canthal. Any of these things, any of the builds that I'm showing today, any of the techniques that I'm showing today, absolutely transfer perfectly to Canthal as well. This is not a Nichrome exclusive. Uh, you can use Nichrome. You don't have to use Nichrome. Totally up to you. Uh, there are other alternatives as well. There's, uh, it's, uh, what, what should I call it? They're like signature wires. There's G-plat, um, there's things like this that I have here. This is Cloud Chasers Incorporated. Um, this is their cloud chasing wire. And it is basically, it's 24 gauge flat flat ribbon wire. But this one in particular has has uh, some little grooves cut into it. But this is just, it's like Canthal wire, except it's flat instead of rounded. Um, you can use flat wire, regular flat ribbon wire as well. Uh, 0.8 millimeter I recommend uh, is a good width. You can build coils out of just ribbon wire. You can also wrap ribbon wire with a uh, canthal to make tiger wire, which is a very interesting, uh, very interesting wire. And I might do a whole video on that in and of itself. Okay, so there are lots of alternatives. Um, okay, now let's say you don't want to, uh, you don't want to hassle, a lot, and you just want to build a real basic coil. Then I would recommend something like this. This is a coil master. If you don't know what it is, um, it's basically you thread your wire through here and then you just twist it and it wraps a coil. They're, they're super simple, they're, they're super idiot proof, and they also work tremendously well. You can use, uh, you can build parallel coils with these, you can use uh, twisted wire in here, regular wire, any gauge, and it comes with a lot of different. Um, bits so you can make a lot of different uh, diameter coils. I don't really use it very much, that's just me. There are other things like this little coil block. This thing is worthless. Don't ever buy this. I got this a long time ago. Basically you trap one, one end of the wire here and you just wrap it around a little rod. It's stupid. It, it makes no sense. You can, might as well use a screwdriver. And as far as screwdrivers, what I recommend are is this set in particular. These yellow Craftsman screwdrivers. They come, uh, they're like three millimeter, they're all millimeter sizes. Three millimeter, 2.4, a zero, 
a number one and a 1.4 millimeter. The zero is what I normally wrap coils with. My day-to-day -day average microfoil is with a zero. And that's, uh, this is a, a fantastic set. Fantastic set. And it has a really good little uh, flat end right here so you can kind of pinch your coil against it. Totally recommend it. Um, other things that I use is a drill. This is gonna help you so much, so much. If you want twisted wire, this is a necessity. You have to have a drill. If you want to uh, straighten your wire really quickly, also a necessity. This is a really cheap drill. I got this for sub $20 on sale. So look out for a sale on a drill. Pick one up, definitely uh, gonna, pay, gonna pay dividends in the future. I keep a pair of scissors, nice sharp scissors around. This is basically for cutting cotton. Uh, a pair of tweezers. Cheap tweezers are the best because um, if you're pinching coils with them, you don't need an expensive set of tweezers. These uh, probably were the second most expensive thing on the table. These are crescent flat, um, flat, what did I say? They're, they ain't got no teeth. They're flat pliers. They're just totally flat in here inside of the, uh, inside of the teeth. There's no teeth here. So these are excellent for pinching wire. Um, you gotta have a pair of these. If you're, if you're building a lot of coils, get a pair of these. It actually comes in a set. This uh, pair of flat pliers and a flush cutter for cutting wire. Also an invaluable tool. Mine have since become so dull that they don't work anymore, but this is a great replacement. These are $5 at Walmart and they're flush cutters. They're in the hobby section. This is for cutting your leads off after we've built a coil and installed it in a device. Um, you can get right up against the device with the, with these and cut and instead of wire flying everywhere it actually will just kind of uh, pinch and fall off so I mean, you don't have to have these little coils you can use tons of other things but I recommend these these are these make my life so much easier to build coils um, this is a torch I don't really use this very much anymore when I first started building coils when I wanted to get them tight I would pinch them with my tweezers before I installed them, and then I would torch them up real good, and then I would, you know, kind of pinch them for a minute more to keep them, keep the shape. I don't really need to do that anymore. And now I, when I install it, I kind of just, if I need to tidy them up, I pinch them while they're, uh, while they're installed in the device. An alternative to these, to these um, tweezers here, these cheap tweezers, they actually make something called a, um, whenever I'm on camera I do this, ceramic tipped tweezers. And in, in that case, with the ceramic tipped tweezers, you can actually pinch your coil while you're firing it. It's an amazing, it's an amazing deal. Those are great. Josh has a pair of those. I haven't gotten one yet. They're like 11, $12. So it's hard, to, it's hard for me at least to shell out 11 or $12 for tweezers. Okay, so now we talked about some of the tools we're using. And now let's talk about why the hell would we build a coil anyways, okay? Obviously, if you're watching this video, you probably already know, but uh, we're using coils, we're using resistance wire to make coils uh, to serve as a heating element in our personal vaporizers. Something like this. This has a coil that I built in it. It basically heats up the nicotine liquid and uh, allows you to produce vapor. Let me take a tilt. Okay, that's good. That's good stuff. So that's the desired effect. You want vapor production from your coils. That's the whole essence of it. Some devices, such as this tank right here, this takes a pre-made coil. You don't have to make your own coils. This is a sub-ohm tank. This is the Smoke VCT Vapor Chaser. Vapor Chaser tank. It's not great, but it was super cheap. I got it for less than $20. My wife loves it. Loves it great airflow on it. I'll give it that. And you can actually crank it up. The watt is pretty good. I can vape it like 40 watts all the time. Um, I'm getting off on a tangent. These things are great for your new person that wants to like get a sub-ohm experience but doesn't want to build their own coils. These are great. They, you get your buy them pre-made. The only downside on those, they're pretty expensive. Even these ones are like $12.97 or something like that or five. And they can go out really fast. They don't use the best quality wire. When you're getting stuff from lightning vapes in particular, I find that the wire is of a very high quality. And if you build your own coils, they can last 
upwards of a month. I, I never let my coils sit that long. I'm a crazy coil junkie. I have literally probably 300 coils pre-built right now in a box that I just had, and I just built them. I don't know why. I don't know. I love building coils. So let's get a, let's get down to, to the brass tacks here. Something else I put on here, this is that this was started off as a joke on the channel, me wearing these safety goggles. But if you're uh, if you're concerned about your eyes, you know, this don't be ashamed to wear these while you're building coils and clipping your leads and stuff like that. Because I've seen canthal pop up and hit people in the eyes before, and it's not a pretty sight. I don't personally use these because I like to live on the edge, but I'm just putting that out there that if you need a pair of sunglasses or something, or whatever look away or something protect your eyes when you're when you're building when you're cutting canthal because that shit will pop up okay enough of that now let's start okay what i'm gonna start with right now is i'm gonna cut me a piece of this 26 gauge nichrome i'm gonna cut me a piece of this 28 gauge nichrome and i'm going to straighten them both i will use these pliers here I will unwind me a little piece Things never go right when you're on camera. That's like a fucking, that's like a rule. All right. We don't need a lot, just one little piece here. That'll do it. I know it's hard for you guys to see the wire, but there it is, yay. Okay, cut that. Now let me cut this piece of 28 gauge and chrome. Jesus Christ. There we go. Also, don't eat a lot. Let me try something real quick. Does that make it better or worse? I can't tell. Alright. Now you can kind of see it. So I got me, it's about a, probably a foot long, 8 inches to 12 inches long piece of each diameter wire. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one end of this wire and I'm going to kind of fold it down on itself. Basically what I'm doing is I'm making something, like a little loop here on the end. And what this is for is for the drill uh, chuck to clamp down on and hold it in place. So let's put that in our drill. We're putting the, the loop in inside the bit of the drill, or the chuck of the drill. We're gonna tighten it down as tight as we can. Now, I'm gonna grab onto one end of the wire with these pliers, and I'm just gonna hit the drill. Literally like that, that much. Take my finger from the bit, or from the, the chuck, and kind of just run my finger along the wire until I get to the end. Let go with the pliers. And that should be straight. Yep, yeah, it is. Straight as an arrow. Let it go out of the chuck. Okay, now that is a totally straight piece of wire. Totally straight. Straight as an arrow. Okay, so we got our one piece of wire done. Now let's just repeat the process with this other piece. Fold it down on one end, stick her in the check. Clamp on down on one end. Hit the drill. Just a couple pulses is what I do. Run your finger up along the wire. Let go. And it holds its shape perfectly. Straight piece of wire. Okay. So now we got two pieces of wire. Um what I'm going to do is take one of these pieces of wire, 28 gauge. I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to take the end here take the end there and I'm going to 
twist the two pieces of wire together. Okay, now what I have here is like a hoop. There's, there it is, resting on my finger. It's just a hoop. One end is twisted together like that. Perfect, okay? Now let's take that twisted end, and we're gonna stick it in the drill. Stick it in the drill, stick it in the drill. Clamp it down tight. All right, uh, for this bit, what am I gonna use? What am I gonna use? I will just use this little screwdriver here. I'm gonna take this screwdriver, I'm gonna hook it through the loop. I'm gonna hook it through the loop like that. And now I'm just gonna run the drill. Be sure if the if the wire starts pulling towards the drill, allow it to move towards the drill. Otherwise, you're gonna get kinks in your wire. Okay, so it's twisted. It's not gonna twist much more than that. It wasn't a big piece of wire. I should have cut more. I'm gonna run my finger up along it. And then I'm gonna pull it off with this screwdriver. I'm gonna undo it from the drill. Okay, now we have a nice little piece of tidily twisted wire. I am going to clip off the loop on the end from the screwdriver that held it in place and the end that I twisted up. All right, so that leaves us about a four inch piece of wire, roughly. Okay, now I'm gonna take, just kind of do the same on this end. Is that from? All right, there we go. Do the same on this end. I'm going to cut the end that I pinched, and then I'm going to measure up the twisted piece and cut me a piece of this other wire, this 26 gauge nichrome, even with the 28 gauge twisted. Boom. Done. Okay. Now we have two pieces of wire of equal length, one twisted 28 gauge nichrome, and one untwisted piece of 26 gauge nichrome. Now, to wrap it, let me grab a screwdriver. Zero, this is gonna be perfect. Now, I'm gonna take both pieces of wire, and I'm gonna make sure that they are sitting side by side, not overlapping. So basically, it looks like a piece of flat wire, but it's made up of two two pieces of round wire, side by side, parallel together. Now, we're gonna take one and pinch down on, on both pieces of wire. Now we're gonna take both pieces and we're gonna hook them over the top of the screwdriver. This is the beginning of our first, of our first wrap. Now, I like to go from the bottom and start just carefully wrapping this coil getting each wrap as close to the last wrap as possible without overlapping and in the case of this parallel coil not letting each individual wire overlap over each other okay so that's three four That's, I'm gonna call that good. This is just a demonstration. Okay, so now this coil is officially ready to be installed into an RDA or an RTA, uh, whatever your case may be, any kind of rebuildable device. Any kind of device that requires you to build your own coils. You got a nice little one here. Okay, so I will install this bad boy into a device, then we'll go up even closer, and I'll let you see it in action. Bye, bye for This now. is what we got when we're done here. Um, let's fire it up. And, yeah, that's about it. For that close-up, well, let's jump back out and let's talk about it. So that's going to wrap it up for us on this coil video. Uh, a little lo-fi, but uh, we don't have a lot of equipment, so... It is what it is. I'm just trying to give uh, give a little bit of help to people who are starting out. 
um, or just people who are looking for ideas. Uh, the whole point of this video was to show you that there are no rules with coils. This coil ended up being 0.25. That's a that's low. Most people probably you know don't start off there. But the idea was that we could take any idea, like the idea of twisted wire and the idea of parallels, and we could combine them. We're just starting off uh, in vaping. People have just started to scratch the surface of what's possible. And you could be the next one to come up with that crazy coil that everybody's talking about. You just have to use your imagination. And that was the point. I didn't want to show you. This is how you specifically make this exact kind of coil, and this is the only way to do it. Because that's not really the case. Um, there's so many different things you can do with these coils. Uh, I've even done things like taking wire, twisting it, and then flattening the wire. That's a crazy coil. I mean, it's, I'm probably not the first one to do it, but I didn't look at a video to teach me how to do that. I thought of it myself. And that's what's great about vaping. I've installed this uh, parallel coil, the one that's part twisted, part regular. I've installed it on my um, Patriot. Authentic Patriot. I have a glass top cap here for it with a wide board drip tip. The original Patriot's airflow, it was a Patriot 1.2, not great. Not great airflow. We have it at, let's pump it up the jams here a little bit. It's sitting at 18 watts, but we wanted it higher than that. We'll say 52.1 watts. Let's try it out. Boom, bam. Thank you, man. If I was so inclined, this coil could last me indefinitely, as long as I maintain it. That's another video I might make later. To maintain your coils, it's very easy. You just take out your cotton, you hit your button, let the coils get bright red, and then, uh, I don't know if I tell you this, and then dunk the dripper into some water, uh, and then all the carbon will come off of the coil. It's a little dangerous. I mean, maybe you shouldn't do it. That's how I do mine. That's how I clean my coils. I got something in the middle today. Goblin V2, baby. Reviews coming up on that really soon. So until next time, people, take this advice. Keep your coils tight. And come over to the Facebook group. It's a fucking party, baby.